this is old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken today. We're going to be talking about Memorial Day. Now here's the surprising part is, I was talking to some friends and I said, oh yeah, the holiday this week and they're going, holiday? I said, yeah, it's Memorial Day. They're going, oh, um, what's Memorial Day? <laughs> They don't know. I'm going, it, what? Okay, what do you mean, what's Memorial Day? It's a it's a three day holiday, uh, salute. Or the weekend the, is, is the, a celebration. Yeah, it's basically it's not even the right day anymore. Memorial Day actually is next week, mm. but because they can't because they don't want to have a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday off because of the unions and basically we'll we'll tell you about it. But they think they that, usually celebrate it the last Monday of May. Yeah, and uh, so this year, the last Monday is this coming Monday, so that uh, Memorial Day originally called Decoration Day is a day of remembrance to those who have died in our nation's service. So there's many stories to its actual beginnings with over two dozen cities and towns being claimed to be the birthplace of Memorial Day. There's also evidence that organized women's groups in the South were decorating graves before the end of the Civil War. A hymn published in 1867, Kneel Where Our Lives Are Sleeping, by Nella Sweet carried the dedication to the ladies of the South who are decorating the graves of the Confederate dead. And I'll tell you that they probably have done this a really long time because it's like people die in war, yeah. the women go and... That's what they call the decoration. They, right? they, they decorated the graves of those people that had mm -hmm. fell. And what happened was the people in the North picked, well, we can't have those blankety black Southerners doing it, so they moved it North. But mm -hmm. here's a good one. You know who moved it Northward? Who? Afro-Americans. Oh really? They took they took it north because they a lot of their people died in the Civil War too. So, and so while Waterloo, New York, was officially declared the birthplace of Memorial Day um, by President Lyndon Johnson in May 1966, this is like a it would have been done a lot earlier. 1966. Yeah. It's difficult to prove conclusively the origins of the day. It is more likely that it had many separate beginnings. Each of those towns and every planned or spontaneous gathering of people to honor the the war debt in the 1860s tapped into the general human need to honor our dead. Each contributed honorably to the grand movement that culminated in General Logan giving his official proclamation in 1868. It's not, in who import, it's not important who was first. What is important is that Memorial Day was established. Memorial Day is not about division. It's about reconciliation. It's about coming together to honor those who gave us their all. Okay. Memorial Day was officially proclaimed on May 5th 1868 by General John Logan, National Commander of the Grand Army of the Republic. That's, you know, uh, the, in a general order, number 11 was first observation, 30th of May, 1868, when flowers were placed on the graves of Union Confederate soldiers at Arlington National Cemetery. People have to remember that Arlington was the uh, ancestral home of Robert E. Lee, so there are Confederates and others buried there, folks. So the first state to officially recognize the holiday was New York. Remember we talked about them going north now, yep. in 1873. But by 1890, it was recognized by all of the northern states. And the South referred to acknowledge the day, honoring their dead on separate days until after World War I, when the holiday changed from honoring just those who died fighting the Civil War to honoring Americans who did, died fighting in any war. Uh, it is now celebrated in almost every state on the last Monday in May passed by Congress with the National Holiday Act of 1971 to ensure a three-day weekend for all the federal holidays is for the union workers. Though several southern states have additional separate day for honoring the Confederate War dead, January 19th in Texas, April 26th in Alabama, Florida, Georgia, and Mississippi, May 10th in South Carolina, and June 3rd after Jefferson Davis's birthday in Louisiana and Tennessee. So in 1915, inspired by the poem in Flanders Fields, Melina Michael replied with her own poem. Um, she then conceived of an idea to wear red poppies on Memorial Day in honor of those who died serving the nation during war. And she was the first to wear one and sold poppies to her friends and co-workers with the money going to benefit servicemen in need. Okay. Yeah, but I haven't seen a lot of poppy sellers. Lately. Neither have I. Uh, later, a Madame Guerin from France was visiting the United States and learned that this new custom started by Miss. Michael, and when she returned to France, made artificial red poppies to raise money for war orphan children and will of woman. This tradition spread to other countries. In 1921, the Franco-American Children's League sold poppies nationally to benefit war orphans of France and Belgium. The league disbanded a year later, and Madame Grimm approached the VFW for help. Shortly before Memorial Day in 1922, the VFW became the first veterans organization to nationally sell poppies. Two years later, 
their buddy poppy program was selling artificial poppies made by disabled veterans. In 1948, the post office honored Ms. Michaels for the heroic County National Poppy Movement by issuing a, a three cent postage stamp with her image on it. Hmm. So traditional observance of Memorial Day has diminished over the years. Many Americans nowadays have forgotten the meaning and traditions of Mor Memorial Day. Yeah, they, need, they don't even remember what it is. They don't. It's just a day that you get to go to... Uh, you know, you know, it's a three-day weekend. Yeah, you know, you're, uh, you're being paid double time to work, so... Well, actually, the other sad part is this year in particular, I've, I've noticed the diminish of celebration for any of the holidays. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just it's, like time off. Yeah. So at many cemeteries, the graves of the fallen are increasingly ignored and neglected. Most people no longer remember the proper flag etiquette for the day. While there are towns and cities that still hold Memorial Day parades, uh, many have not held a parade in decades. And some people think that the day is, honor is for honoring any and all dead, not just those fallen in service to our country. Um, there's, there are notable exceptions since the 1950s. On the Thursday before Memorial Day, the 12,000 soldiers, the third, 1,200 soldiers of the Third U.S. Infantry placed small American flags at each of the more than 260,000 gravestones at Arlington National Cemetery. They then patrol 24 hours a day during the weekend to ensure each flag remains standing. In 1951, the Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts of St. Louis began placing flags on the 150,000 graves at the Jefferson Barracks National Monument. As a, an annual good turn of practice that continues this day. More recently, beginning in 1998, on Saturday before the observed day for the Memorial Day, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts place a candle of each approximately uh, 15,500 graves at the Soldier Brig of Fredericksburg and Spotsville National Military Park at Mary's Height, the Lunar Program. And in 2004, Washington, D.C. held its first Memorial Day parade over 60 years. I know that basically this year, I think Gary Sinise is the is the uh, Grand Marshal. Mm. I always like to watch all of the parades. Yeah. Or at least see their celebrations because they usually do one over by the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah. Yeah. To help re educate and remind Americans of the true meaning of Memorial Day, the National Moment of Remembrance resolution was passed on December 2000, which asked that at 3 p.m. local time for all Americans to voluntarily and informally observe in their own way a moment of remembrance and respect pausing from whatever they are doing for a moment of silence or listening to taps. This is uh, most of the time, if you notice, is when the planes fly overhead at the, at the things. It would be, you know, like in our time, it would be 12 o'clock. It would be, you know, 3 o'clock, uh, 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock. You see the planes fly over and one plane go, so. Um, you see, the moment to reverse a step in the right direction to return the meaning back to the day. What is needed is a full return to the original day of the service, set aside one day out of the year for the nation to get together, remember, and reflect on those who have given their service to the country. So, I mean, I've got lots of dead relatives that died that basically don't get honored anymore, folks. Mm -hmm. But what may be needed to return the solemn and even sacred spirit back to Memorial Day is for return to its traditional day of observance. Many feel that when Congress made the day into a three-day weekend in the National Holiday Act of 1971, it made it all the easier for people to be distracted from the spirit and the meaning of the day. As the VFW stated in its 2002 Memorial Day Address, changing the date merely to create three-day weekends has undermined the very meaning of the day. No doubt this has contributed greatly to the general public's nonchalant observance of Memorial Day. Well, because you know, um, they don't even have they don't even have the Indy 500 on the right day anymore because of it. Was it, well, Indy 500 supposed to be Memorial Day? Yeah. Because well, they just have it on the weekend, right? It's the always last weekend done. Of May. It's on. It's on the last Sunday in May. Mm -hmm. But still, it's always you know. But they have had it at times on January 19th, 1999. Senator Senator Inouye introduced a bill to the Senate which proposed to restore the traditional day of service to Memorial Day back to May 30th instead of the last Monday in May, which is what it's supposed to be. On April 19th, uh, 1999, Representative Gibbons introduced the bill to the House of Representatives. Basically, it's been referred to committee and it's been stuck there in all those years. So, mm. On Memorial Day, the flag of the United States is raised briskly to the top of the staff and then solemnly lowered, lowered to the half-staff position, where it remains only until noon. It is then raised to full staff for the remainder of the day. Now, I did not realize that. Yeah. So are people supposed to do that too, or is it just... They're basically what it is, if you have a home flag, you dip the flag. 
You don't put, you know, if you, most of them don't. But that's only until noon. Yeah, and then you raise the, and then you basically, uh, for instance, a lot of people just have flag stands, but they're raising, but as you don't have it up here uh, until noon, you have it like here until noon, and then you. A half you, mass. Yeah, half mass, so. Actually, we'll put that out. I didn't know that you were supposed to do that. So Memorial Day observances in small New England towns are often marked by dedications and remarks by veteran state legislation and selectmen. What's a selectman? Select people or no, selectman is like city councilman. Ah. So it's just the word for New England is selectman is to the councilman or alderman. So um, they have to have position members, the more than one million men and women who have gave their lives in the service of our country. At noon, their memory is raised by the living who resolve not to let their sacrifices be in vain, but to rise up to the steel feet and continue to fight for the liberty and justice for all. That's, that's Superman's thing, so, but there's, your, there's not what you send out, so. Um, the National Memorial Day concert takes place on the west lawn of the United States Capitol, over by the Lincoln Memorial. And the concert is broadcast on PBS and NPR. Music is performing respect is paid to the men and women who gave their lives for their country. One of the unique things this year is that media were able to go. Media is. The day is Friday. Media was able to go there this morning and see the rehearsals all day long of what's going on. That would be great. And at night, which we didn't know, there's a dress rehearsal tonight for the media. Oh, see, it's like if we'd known that in advance. I know. We would so love we to. do have one advantage. We actually have the we have the things we can pick up the feeds tonight if we wanted it. So uh, basically, for many Americans, a central event is attending one of the thousands of parades held on Memorial Day in the largest small city across the country. Most of these parades feature marching bands and overall military theme with the National Guard and other servicemen participating along with veterans and military vehicles from various wars. I just like the flyover. They used to do the flyover. I'd come over and I got to be the one that got peeled off. And when I would peel off, I deliberately did a roll with the plane as I was peeling off and then zoomed up into the sky. That's how they knew it was me. I got in trouble every time I did it. They really liked it in the crowd. I bet the crowd's really, I would like to they see that. They did a that. barrel roll and then go. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. And one of the largest standing traditions is the running of the Indy 500 in all race, which has been held in conjunction with Memorial Day since 1911. That would be fun to be there. We had an invite for that too. Yeah. It runs on the Sunday preceding the Memorial Day holiday. Um, the Coca-Cola 600 stock car race has been held later the same day since 1961, and the Memorial Tournament golf event has been held on or close to Memorial Day weekend since 1976. Yeah, um, they all do it the last Monday, yeah, or la the, the, the last, last weekend, weekend of, of May. May. Yeah, because Memorial Day is generally associated with the start of the summer season, it's common tradition to inaugurate the outdoor cooking season with Memorial Day with a barbecue, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we were going to inaugurate it with fried chicken, but we didn't get there, so... You go there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, scholars following the lead of sociologist Robert Bella often make the argument that the United States has secular civil religion, one with no association with any religious denomination or viewpoint that has incorporated Memorial Day as a sacred event. No, it's just a day to honor the dead folks. With the Civil War, a new theme of death, sacrifice, and rebirth enters the civil religion. <laughs> God, I hate people to do that. Memorial Day gave the the ritual expression of these themes integrating the local community with a sense of nationalism. The, the American civil religion, in contrast to that of France, were never uh, anti clerical or military, military or secular, in contrast to Britain. It is not tied to a specific denomination such as the Church of England. The Americans borrow from different religious traditions so that the average American saw no conflict between the two and Deep levels of personal motivation were aligned with these national goals. And this is a new one that we hadn't done before in the years past. We've done this one. Yeah, this is this that it's now a religious event for a national secular religion. Which we didn't I've know. never heard that before. I know so. that's totally new. So Charles Ives' symphonic poem "Decoration Day" depicted the holiday as he experienced it in his childhood, with his father's band leading the way to the town cemetery to play him taps on a trumpet and a livelier march tune on the way back to the town. It is frequently played with three other, yes, three other Ives works based on holidays as the second movement of a New England Holidays Symphony. There is also Memorial Day 2012 film starring James Cromwell, Jonathan Bennett, and John Cromwell. I bet it's John yeah. and James are related. Yeah, I would assume one of the son and one of the father, <laughs> James we've met, so. But um, no, it's just, 
every year we try to bring you something a little bit different and we find out something that we didn't know before. Well, we're also seeing how, if you want to call it, uh, history is changing in time. Yeah, history basically, um, uh, it, it, I, would, I might agree to journalism, so it's hers. My, you know, the, the rule of thumb in, in journalism is um, uh, hi, hi, the, the writing of history goes to those people that control the presses. Mm -hmm. So until our next date, where we see what has been changed since our last thing, which would be the 4th of July, this is old Cam. This is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow for more information. You can go to www.montybubble.net on the net or www.thetravelsuite.com, which will have similar sort of information to this, but both of them are a little bit different. So if you want to see both sides of things, you have to go to both sides. And wherever you're watching, subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D. And thank you once again for over hundreds and hundreds of millions of links on the internet. And yes, come like us and friend us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and come join us whether it's MBN News Video Web or MontyBubbles.net on the internet. Thanks. Happy Memorial Day weekend. <laughs>